something which is very useful practical and uh, uh, so in that manner i think uh, this kind of response uh, in around 300 participants i am really very happy so the purpose of uh, the webinar which you have uh, conducted you thought about it ranjit i think it is so successful um, really wonderful thank you sir and i can proudly say that uh, i mean with my 30 years of uh, teaching experience uh, i have uh, produced almost around uh, 13 to 2600 uh, post graduate students i have taught them econometrics i can proudly say that uh, most of the southern states colleges especially in kerala now they are uh, gradually uh, including this basic econometrics as a paper in their curriculum uh, in that uh, thing i think i was an instrumental for that and i made my students to be confident and to take those papers i can name around even 20 teachers immediately those who are teaching in kerala including ranjit and so many other people uh, including in iim and uh, iits okay so uh, let us go into this one as i told you earlier now it is uh, 11 so up to 12:30 uh, we'll go for the basic of econometrics and uh, the title itself says that is econometrics for beginners so uh, let me introduce you the subject econometrics and uh, that is not enough but this motivation and uh, i i am confident that i can instill confidence in your mind that econometrics a subject it is reachable it's not something fully based on mathematics so uh, i i am i am averse to that one so such a kind of thinking need not be there because nowadays economics is not simply uh, accepting what others are saying okay earlier it was like that if uh, somebody some of our teachers are well known economists of uh, the country or at the international level if they say that this is what happening and this is if you do something uh, this is going to happen uh, in the form of various economic theories uh, even it is a published article and it is accepted blindly but now during the last uh, 60 70 years or at least 50 years that is not the case because the country to country time to time the economic relationship varying the i mean each country has its own problem um, but it is all brought under the headings of economic issues or economic problems but the solutions cannot be the same one for every country and even in the same country the solution which we have taken in 80s will not be suitable for 90s and which will not be suitable in the 2020s so at every point of time we have to prove ourselves that economics is a dynamic subject it's not a static one so you can have a solution which will fit into all the problems all the time for all the nations so if it is a dynamic subject when you accept economics as a dynamic subject and you know that economics is very much closely associated with the business administration and so many other things so when you accept it is a dynamic subject dynamism need measurement because uh, you have to measure at a given point of time the relationship among economic variable then only there is a possibility to find out the solution for those problems okay so on that note let me introduce you some powerpoint so that uh, we can proceed with uh, that one okay just right i'll just Okay. Are you able to see my slide? All of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are able to see. Okay, good, good. And maybe I think you need not take down all those things. Uh, maybe I'll share it with Ranjit. So, and uh, along with your e-certificates, 
I think there is a possibility for him to send it to you. Okay, right. So let us start with the question of what is econometrics. Econometrics is simply nothing but economic measurement. Okay, it, it, it helps, as I told you earlier, if you consider economics as a dynamic subject, right, over the period of uh, time, you know, it, it goes along with the changes uh, in the business cycle or economic cycle or whatever it is. We have to measure. So simply uh, measuring the economic relationship is nothing but econometrics. And a better definition given by Tintner is, it is simply an application of the mathematical statistics to economic data in order to lend empirical support to the econometric models or economic mathematical model to obtain results. And uh, okay, it, it is a social science. Econometrics is a social science which applies economic theory, mathematics, and statistical inference to the analysis of economic phenomena. So uh, it is very simple that econometrics is used for measurement and it is a combination of three subjects. One is economic theory. The second one is statistics. And the third one is mathematics. So now you may ask a question, why we should have a separate discipline? Econometrics is not a separate, uh, I mean, econometrics itself is not a separate one. Econometrics is a combination of three subjects. So if you want to learn econometrics, you must be very thorough about economic theory. Without the basic knowledge of economic theory, you cannot go into econometrics. Because if you want to apply econometric techniques, you should have this economic theoretical knowledge. So what is economic theory? It is simply statements that are mostly qualitative in nature. One small example I say that it's the Keynes psychological law of consumption. Most of you are uh, uh, commerce and economics background, so we all know about what is consumption. And uh, Keynes, a famous economist, had brought down a psychological law of consumption, which says that in a verbal uh, format, whenever income increases, consumption also increases but not at the same proportion. This is the simple statement of Keynes psychological law of consumption. It is nothing but an economic theory. So theory of consumption function. So you should have a clear knowledge about what is consumption and what are the theories are related to consumption. From consumption. Keynes is the not the only person who has given the theory of consumption. And there are so many other people that brought in uh, in that. So you as a research scholar or even a postgraduate student, you should broadly read about a particular aspect that will help you to have a clear cut knowledge about economic theory. Because unless you have an economic theory, you are kind of like, uh, you know, uh, in a, you, you just imagine a football ground. Okay. Uh, 22 players are there. A ball is also there, but both sides, the goal force is not there. And referee gave a whistle and people started going on. And there is no aim to that one. There is no, go, there is no aim in it. So which means unless you have a clear cut understanding of economic theory, the goal is to estimate the economic relationship. So for that, we, have, we need a help of, we need a help of, uh, a, a, a tool called econometrics, right? Now, the moment I say that the knowledge of economic theory helps us to relate the issues raised or issues in and around us to the theory. For example, recently we had the pandemic and you all witnessed that most of the business units were closed and a lot of migrant workers had to walk from their working place to their living place their native place. And uh, then immediately, we, 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 there are a lot of articles have come. There are a lot of articles have come. And the articles is about uh, the theory of employment, theory of uh, production, theory of so many things have come into the picture. So now the issue is the labor and labor law and labor relationship. And so what we have to do now, we have to understand about the economic theories related to employment 
and how the variable employment is related to the other variables and why not those protection given. So we try to measure where there is a mistake into that one. And remember, if you want to measure, we need, we need a help of mathematics. A simple example, there are two uh, boys are standing there. I just wanted to know who is taller, A is taller than B or B is taller than A. Right? The possibility is three possibilities. A can be taller than B, B is taller than A, and A is equal to B. Only three chances are there. But I cannot simply speak about only these three chances. Ultimately, I have to measure and say, yes, A is taller than B or B is taller than A. I have to prove. So to do, I need a technique. I need a scale. So I will measure. And I will say that he is 1.72 and he is 1.70 so that this person is taller than that person. When you use these kind of uh, uh, techniques like mathematics, nobody can dispute it. If they wanted to dispute and say that your answer is not correct, your findings are not correct, they have to come up with a better answer. They have to do a better technique and they have to have a better data and then that will help us. So the economic theory has to convert it into mathematical economics. So what is mathematical economics? Mathematical economics simply nothing but converting the economic theory into mathematical equations. Okay, so you all know about law of demand. The law of demand says whenever price increases, the quantity demand for that product will decline when keeping all the other things remaining constant. So this is a statement of law of demand. Now, what I do, I wanted to convert that law of demand into equation format, where I will say the left-hand side variable is nothing but quantity and right-hand side variable is price. So I'll say Q is a function of price. So Q is a function of price. Then I will say it is a linear format. So the moment we say linear, our school mathematics helps us to explain in an equation format, in a straight line equation format, so that I can say Q, the quantity demanded, is equal to one basic uh, A plus B of price. I can simply say that one. So let me go into that. So which means I'm converting that uh, verbal statement of uh, the demand law into an equation format. So why, what is the need for an equation format? Only when you have an equation format, then you can have a economic statistics and mathematical statistics. So the you be clear, you have economic theory, any issue, you, you just name any economic issue and there will be a related theory done by so many economists in so many uh, nations. Okay, right, fine. There are a lot of articles are there. It is our job to read and only the time is uh, needed. And then whatever economic theory is there, it has to be converted into mathematical format of that economic theory. And then the economic statistics. So we need, if you want to estimate that uh, economic, the mathematical model, uh, then we need data. The data you can collect it from uh, various respondents, various respondents. So that, that collection of data, suppose I wanted to study about the migration issue, then I have to meet the migrants who face the problem. And it can be 100 or 600 or 6,000, whatever it is, it depends on my time and cost of that one. So what I do, I collect information, collect information about the age and the years of experience, what the income they have earned and anything, whatever you want, you can collect information. So the collection and tabulation, classification, presentation in a small diagrams, which is nothing but economic statistics. That may not be enough because uh, I one simple example I'll give you. Suppose if I go and ask, uh, you know, two boys in a class, what are your marks? And tell me your average marks, both of you. Then those boys will add the two marks divided by two and they will say that your mark. And they are saying that, sir, our average is 50. Good, right. I'm asking two girls, randomly selected. And I ask, what are your average marks for these two girls? They are also saying 50. So the two girls are saying, my average marks are 50. Our average marks are 50. And the two boys are also saying our average marks are 50. So immediately, if I go to the principal and say that in, a, in my class, the boys' performance and girls' performance are equal, then it, that may not be wrong. Because economic statistics may give you those kind of things. But unless you go a step ahead of mathematical statistics, then there is, say, I, 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 I'm not only accepting that uh, 
50 and 50, I will ask the individual, what is your marks? And the boy says, my marks is 90. The other fellow got 10. Okay, so 90 and 10. If I add, it will be 100 divided by 2, 50. And if I ask the girls, the one girl is saying my mark is 51. The other girl is saying 49. So 49, 51, it is 100. 100 divided by 2, 50. There it is 90 and 10 or 99 and 1. Here it is 49 and 41 and uh, 49 and 51. So I was I wanted to see not only the average, I have to go for the deviation into that one. So then statistics throughout 100 years or 200 years, a lot of statisticians have worked out these things and they have brought out a, a formula for all of us. So we need not worry about that. We need not ask the question why it has come like that and then you have to join for BSC statistics and MSC statistics. So we just accept what is available and we take and use it. So if you apply standard, standard deviation, if you apply standard deviation, if you apply standard deviation, then you will get the value of, uh, the, the, for the boy's case, it will be so different and the girl's case, it will be very less. So then I can say the girl's performance is better than boy's performance. So this is about the mathematical statistics. And I just gave you a small example, a baby step. And you have so many things have come, especially with the help of the computer. You can, uh, it is not only for two people, two million people, two million customers, you can, uh, two million customers, you can find out the averages and standard deviation at a stroke of it. So uh, this is the, these are the, uh, these are the basic ingredients are basic things which we needed to get into econometrics. So if I say econometrics, it's very simple that economic theory, mathematical economics, and economic statistics, mathematical statistics, and if you put together, you will have this one. Okay, so you look at this one, economic theory is top, mathematical economics is in the right-hand side. In the bottom, you have economic statistics and mathematics statistics, and put together all these things, in the middle, you have econometrics. So economic theory is verbal explanation. Mathematical economics is simply nothing but the mathematical expression of the economic theories. And economic statistics is nothing but what you are getting the data. And mathematical statistics is uh, how to, uh, you, I mean, get the measurement of those things. Fine. And uh, uh, let me just uh, spend some time on methodology of econometrics. Hope I think you all understand what is econometrics. Econometrics is simply nothing but a subject which is a combination of economic theory, okay, ma statistics and mathematics. Okay, if you put together these three things, then we will get a subject or a tool which will help us to measure economic theory. Then the question is, why do we want to measure economic theory? Because we need to, we need to, uh, we need to go for, uh, you know, further estimation and problem solving of uh, this one. Fine. Okay. Now, um, if I just uh, take the methodology of uh, uh, econometrics, it has around seven steps are there. The first step is statement of the theory or hypothesis. Statement of the theory or hypothesis. So any, listen, any issue in economics can be converted into a hypothesis. Say for example, um, you, you, may, you may say that uh, women are discriminated in wages. So that wage discrimination is a concept emerged. So then you can easily construct a hypothesis that there is no significant difference between the average wages of earned by male members and female workers, male workers and female workers. So you set a null hypothesis always. You set a hypothesis and with your research, you accept or reject the null hypothesis. So the first step is have the knowledge of economic theory have the knowledge of economic theory. And from there, you just take the crux of the matter and construct a hypothesis. So construction of hypothesis will help you to accept or reject the null hypothesis. Fine, right? Okay, so for example, uh, keen psychological law of consumption. Consumption increases as income increases, but not at, as much as the increase. So first of all, you can have an null hypothesis. There is no significant influence by income on consumption. You can have an null hypothesis of there is no significant influence by income on consumption, right? And once if you reject it, then you come to a conclusion. Yes, there is an influence by income on consumption. The question here is how much it is. Keynes said 
there is an increase but the the econometricians want how much it is okay in kerala if uh, given uh, the family if suppose if the family income increased by 1000 rupees how much they are increasing it for the consumption expenditure in kerala in tamil nadu in andhra in punjab so it need not be the same one it need not be the same one and we can even take that you know income group wise also in the in the low income group how much is the change in the middle income group how much is the change so uh, it, it cannot be, this is general this this statement is general but first thing is you prove whether it is there or not and then you can measure that magnitude so what is the value for my sample collected from kerala my sample collected from delhi something like that so uh, in economics those uh, those who have studied economics you know that this is nothing but marginal propensity to consume so he keen say that marginal propensity to consume must be in between 0 and 1 so you can prove whether it is there or not so this is the first step not only this one this is an example any issue any economic issue are related to business you take it can be converted into a, 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 a hypothesis form like this the second thing is i told you not you have to convert that into mathematical format so what is happening here so you can see like no this y is nothing but the dependent variable which is nothing but your consumption expenditure your consumption expenditure is a function of income income is nothing but x so y is consumption expenditure maybe in thousands of rupees per month x is income which is thousands of rupees per month and uh, the relationship between y and x are linear the relationship between y and x are linear the moment you call it as a linear then it can be expressed in a straight line in mathematics in school mathematics you might have studied that a straight line equation can be expressed as y equal to a plus bx a is the intercept b is the slope a is the intercept and b is the slope so uh so there is a possibility to have an intercept which we are calling it as beta 1 and slope which is nothing but beta 2 okay this is and and look at this one uh keen said when income increases consumption also increases but not at the same proportion not at the same proportion so it will be if your income is increased by 1000 rupees you will not increase your consumption expenditure by more than 1000 rupees so that is why this zero and one comes there you you may save all the increased income or you will spend all the increased income so you are you are the proportion of income which has been converted into consumption is in between 0 and 1 suppose if it is 0.80 then if your income is increased by 1000 rupees you will increase your consumption expenditure by 800 rupees if it is 0.37 then you can come to a conclusion that if your income is increased by 1000 rupees you will increase your consumption expenditure by 370 so now it is very clear the keen psychological law of consumption has been expressed in a equation like y which is the dependent variable nothing but consumption expenditure x is independent variable which is nothing but income and these two are linearly related so i am saying in a straight line equation so y is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 of x hope you all understand right now suppose if x is equal to 0 which means when you don't have any income what is your consumption expenditure your consumption expenditure is nothing but beta 1 is it correct when i substitute x is equal to 0 beta 2 into 0 so y is equal to beta 1 what does it mean even if i don't have any income this month i will disable whatever i have saved in the bank i will take out something and i will meet the basic need what is this basic need for survival for I, i need some food i need some water and the basic needs for my family that is nothing but your beta 1 so my now hope you understand that your consumption expenditure or your family consumption expenditure is equal to basic expenditure to be met for your family plus a portion of your income is it correct so your family consumption expenditure remember you just imagine your family right your family your family's monthly expenditure this is nothing but this one your family's monthly expenditure is split into a basic minimum need plus a portion of your income if this portion of this is if it is 0.70 i can say 70 percentage of your income plus the basic need will be nothing but so this is the way it is related this is the way it is related okay clear right so specification of the 
mathematical model of the theory. But now come to the important one, specification of the econometric model of the theory. Okay, what is the difference between the earlier one and this one? In the earlier one, you don't have anything here. You don't have a, an additional variable here, right? And here now you have an additional value variable here. Now what this U makes the difference, okay? So this is what making a mathematical model into an econometric model. Hope you all understand, right? So this is the mathematical model. This is the theory. This is the theory. This is the mathematical model. And this is the econometric model. Okay, what is the difference between that and this? So here, listen, listen. I told you that your income, your income, sorry, your consumption expenditure is equal to basic minimum plus a portion of your X, right, fine. Now assume that in an apartment, let us assume in an apartment, there are 10 families are there. Assume that, right? Okay, there are 10 families are there in an apartment. All of them are working in the same place, same company, okay, right? All of them are in the same cadre also. All of them are in the same cadre also. So almost all of them are getting the same salary. All of their income is same, fine, right? They are all in the same income group. Say, let us assume that one lakh rupee per month. All the 10 families, the breadwinner is earning one lakh rupee per month. Fine, clear, right? Now, how much is the family expenditure for all the 10 family? Basic minimum, basic minimum plus and uh, let us assume all of them are living in the same area. The family size is same. And uh, they all have the same habit because it is uh, a little bit away from the city. So they have uh, only very few opportunities. So they, 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 their spending habit is also, they, they, their spending uh, possibilities are same. So that we can say this is also same for all of them. So now the question is, income is same. Number of members of the family is same, right? Okay. But their expenditure, the 10 families, it vary. It vary. Why it vary? Because the basic uh, need for all the 10 families is same, right? And this is also income influence also same. But each of them differ by their taste or by their habit of spending or by their, uh, you know, so many things, some untoward expenditure could have been there, or uh, they have a habit of spending more, or they have a habit of uh, saving more. Suppose if they have a girl child, they may think that, you know, future we need some income, or even a boy child, they can say that, you know, I have to spend uh, some money for his future, so they can save a little bit more. So the human behavior is differing from family to family. Though there are 10 families are there, the characteristics of the family differ. So the characteristics difference will make the difference of their spending habit. So where do I account that one? If I take the basic minimum expenditure of this beta one for all the 10 families, same. If I take the income influence, again, for all the family, it is same. But this component of this U, it is not same for all the family their spending habit, their savings habit, their, uh, you know, um, uh, their uh, passion to enter entertainment, their uh, digital market, uh, digital usage of uh, digital marketing usage, all those things. So this uh, you makes the difference. Okay, fine. So now by adding this variable into the equation, I am able to capture the entire thing relationship between consumption and income. So my consumption is not only depends on my income, but also some other variables, some other, some other influence. So this influence is random. This influence is random. And remember, family to, to family, this U value will be either positive or negative or zero. Okay, so U takes the, U takes the value of positive or negative or zero. Because if there is a person who spend lavishly, there will be a person who spend very miserly. Okay, that is the quite normal thing. So now you can see the difference between the mathematical and econometric model. So this U makes the difference of mathematical to econometric, fine, okay. okay. Now, uh, then the next thing is if I, okay, what are the, what are the, this conversion says that one, I have the data for consumption expenditure from 
thousand families. I collected data. I just asked them the question: What is your monthly consumption expenditure? Thousand family have gave me the data, and I also asked them the same person: What is your income per month? They also gave this one. So I have thousand values related to Y, thousand value related to X. But I cannot get the value from the family about you. Hope you understand. So in this equation. i have y which is the dependent variable i collect the data by asking the question what is your consumption expenditure family consumption expenditure last month they gave me the data thousand values i have entered in my excel first column and what is your income i also got it suppose thousand different uh, uh, persons if i asked there is a possibility of maybe not maybe thousand values are little bit less uh, 700 800 values because there may be some repetition also there fine right but this one i cannot ask this one i cannot ask. how much is your taste or how much your saving behavior i cannot ask those kind of questions it's very difficult to convert into numerical format convert into numerical format so this is not possible but with the help of these two i have to find out what is beta 1 and beta 2 beta 2 so given the income range of these thousand families how much proportion of their income is being given to uh, is being given to the uh, consumption expenditure so this beta 2 is nothing but this beta uh, this beta 2 is nothing but the marginal propensity to consume hope you understand this beta 2 is marginal propensity to consume so an econometrician's aim is to estimate this and this keeping this into mind so mathematical model there is an exact relationship listen there is an exact relationship in the earlier one there is an exact relationship which means so for example in your college i think you may have a chemistry lab right if you ask the chemistry teacher take one component a and another component b mix it and heat at a given temperature it will give c okay a b mix it and heat uh, heat it with a given temperature you will get c so this is a fixed exact relationship between a b c whether you do it in uh, bishop moor college or madras christian college or oxford university it will be the same thing so there is an exact relationship so it is very easy to explain that exact relationship but economics is a study of human behavior and human behavior keep on changing okay yesterday's human behavior of mine will not be because this current situation may be different uh, uh, 10 years 20 years back i never thought of uh, spending that much money for for my communication purpose but now i had to spend lot of money for my communication purpose because it has changed so it is it, it is a change is the dynamic one so now hope you understand that this is an inexact relationship uh, a relationship between y and x which is inexact incomplete but i am making it as a complete one by adding one error term a stochastic term a random term that random term which i don't have the value but i know that this will be influencing so in economics in study of human behavior this random component is very very important and that disturbs the relationship between y and x hope you understand right and to estimate that beta 1 and beta 2 i need data i need data so i collect data i collect data as i like similarly i collected data like this okay or it may be a time series data like this or thousand respondents so i have my students in every state so i can simply send a google form to them and then ask them to collect it uh, and send it to me right because this it's a possibility of that one now with the help of the data i estimate that beta 1 and beta 2 now for example here look at this one so you have estimated this number you may ask the question sir how did you get this one that i'll come later so there is some formula is there some derived formula is there i apply that formula and i got this value i got this value and suppose this 0.71 forget about this one because when income is zero i think that is uh, in this case it's okay but in various other relationship this uh, x takes zero may not be uh, maybe an extreme case okay let us not worry about that one so what is this 71 indicating or 72 indicating whenever income increases by 1 rupee the consumption increased by 72 paise okay so how do we estimate i'll come little later but understand this 
there is a possibility to get this number and this, suppose assume that this is a plus value uh, assume that this is a plus value fine then i can say when x is equal to 0 the family has to spend 231.8 rupees something like that fine okay so this see, 0 0.72 will help you for a quite lot of things see for example um, uh, you know that uh, the income multiplier income multiplier is nothing but what 1 divided by 1 minus npc income multiplier is 1 divided by 1 minus npc so if npc is 0 0.80 if npc is 0 0.80 then what will happen 1 divided by 1 minus 0 0.80 1 divided by 1 minus 0 0.80. So it is 1 divided by 0 0.20, which is equal to 5. So which means in 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 in, uh, in India, if you invest 1 rupee, invest 1 rupee, then I think it will be multiplied into 5 times. Because the in India, the families are spending 80% uh, of their income is being spent on the consumption expenditure. Is it okay? Fine. Um, I don't know why this is happening. Uh, Okay, fine. Anyway, so hypothesis testing again that I told you know that MPC equal to zero, MPC equal to zero. H not the null hypothesis. H not null hypothesis. MPC equal to zero, and uh, based on certain techniques like a T test or uh, other tests, we can uh, reject or accept the null hypothesis. If you reject the null hypothesis, you will come to a conclusion that income is significantly influencing consumption. Okay, so that it is not only the estimation of the beta one and beta two value. It is not only, see, I told you that the purpose of uh, this model is to estimate this beta 1 and beta 2. But now what I'm saying that one, it is not a complete one. Once if you estimate this one, it is not enough. Then you have to go and test the hypothesis. You have to test the hypothesis whether you, you see in the beginning, I think you had a null hypothesis, you know, with the help of economic theory and by rejecting or accepting, you are making an end of that particular process of uh, studying or estimating that one will come a little later. And what is the use of it? Use of it is nothing but you can forecast. You can forecast or you can predict. So for some, suppose you have taken an income group of 50,000, I mean 5,000 to 50,000. Then you can also forecast if it is 70,000, what will be the income change? What will be the consumption change? And if you have estimated up to 2020, you can forecast for 2025. Okay, so there is a need for forecasting because only when you forecast, say for example, um, let us take these LPG cylinders. LPG cylinders, uh, the need, demand for LPG cylinders. The demand for LPG cylinders, I can simply uh, calculate uh, based on the earlier data. I have the data for past uh, 30 years, 30 years into 12 months. So I have uh, that many data is, uh, is available to me. Right now, based on that, I will forecast what will be the possible demand for LPG cylinder in say 2025. If I have an idea about in 2025, what will be the uh, you know demand for LPG cylinders in India, then I will look into the, uh, the supply side. Uh, is this uh, given uh, the manufacturing, uh, you know, the production of cylinders in 2025, will they be able to match it? If suppose if there will be a gap between demand and supply in 2025, and the government can think and start some uh, refineries and then they can match the demand in the near future. So this is the process of uh, this one. And again, uh, this is also helpful for uh, uh, policy evaluation. Say, uh, for example, um, this uh, 100 days Mandrega uh, scheme. Okay, so you can take an hypothesis that, you know, this scheme had improved the uh, standard of living of the poor people in living in area, rural area. So you have an null hypothesis of that one. But after collecting the data, you can analyze, you can analyze and come to a conclusion was, yes, there is a possibility of this scheme increasing the standard of living of people, those who are living in the poor area, in the uh, rural area. And once if you prove it and evaluate the policy, then you can suggest the policy can be continued or policy can be withdrawn. So uh, it is for the policy purpose of it. So now you can just see that one uh, methodology. So I, I, I just reiterate the point. Econometrics is not a separate discipline. Econometrics is a combination of three things. We need economic theory, a clear cut economic theory knowledge of wide range of whatever variable you wanted to concentrate. Then from the theory, you can uh, go to statistics and with the help of mathematical techniques, you can measure something 
and that measurement will help you uh, in this one. So you just read that one, economic theory, mathematical model of the theory, econometric model of theory, <coughs> data, estimation of econometric model, hypothesis testing, forecasting or prediction, using the model for control or policy. Just give me a minute time. Okay, right, fine. Now at this particular point, suppose if one or two questions, I am accepting it through chat box. Okay, so then if suppose if there's no uh, thing, then I can. So look at this one. So from economic theory, you're so, going to mathematical hello, model, hello, sir. economic uh, model, hello, and hello, then sir. data collection. You're estimating it. So no, here sir. is a question for you. That is, sir, how do I estimate? You may ask, how do I estimate this? Then hypothesis testing, I told you that mere uh, uh, estimation is not enough. You have to test the hypothesis. Okay, the existing theory has to be converted into a hypothesis and then you have to test it and that uh, after once if you test the hypothesis then you can use it for forecasting or a policy evaluation so this is the way uh, the process of economic techniques will go for it and uh, suppose if uh, you are not able to uh, you know accept that this model is correct so in, in look at this one in, the, in this case if the hypothesis cannot be proved then again you can go back and collect the data or you can construct the different model, uh, different variables can be included. All those things are possible. Okay. Now, uh, maybe some examples with econometric studies, what we can do. Production function can be estimated. You know that production uh, output is a function of labor and capital. And uh, you, all your teachers might have taught uh, what is cobb douglas production function. But the question is, can I estimate the cobb douglas production function? Is it possible to estimate cobb douglas production function? Because unless I estimate cobb douglas production function or any other production function, I cannot say the firm is an efficient one or not. So please take this thing, all these 300 participants. It's not an easy thing. It is not a joke. You should have a dedicated one and you must have a passion to learn for all these things. And uh, you have to ask questions at any point of time. When there is a uh, when some teacher taught something like elasticity of substitution or elasticity of demand, tax impact, then you have to take that into the practical case. Really, okay, is it possible to take 50 products? If there are 50 students in a class, take 50 different products and try to find out the elasticity of demand and elasticity of supply. And then list, list out, classify, which are all uh, normal goods, which are all luxury goods, all those things. So don't ever think that, you know, it is all only theory. It is only for a two marks question or it is only for an exam, internal or external. No, I'm sorry. If you have that kind of attitude, it will be very difficult to learn econometrics because econometrics always ask the question and try to find out the answer. So cobb douglas production function have been taught. Now, how do I estimate cobb douglas production function for a given firm if the data is given to me? Okay, right, fine. And then, for example, wage equation. There is a possibility of uh, wage is varying. Suppose if you meet 100 workers, uh, then all of them are not getting the same wage. Then you can ask the question, why? Why there is a variation? Why there is a variation? Then you can think about wage is a function of education level, experience, and gender discrimination is there. Even the racial discrimination is also there. Now, here in India, we have a caste discrimination. Fine, right. So there is a possibility to estimate. And once if you estimate with the collected data, then you can suggest the policy. If you find that there is a gender discrimination, definitely I think it has to be eradicated. And if there is a uh, caste discrimination, then I think it has to be eradicated. But somebody have to prove it. And it is not be mere by just observing and saying something. You have to do an analysis and then get back to this one. Okay. Right. So these are all the things which I've already used it, dependent variable, independent variable. Two types of data normally we use it. The one is cross-sectional data and the other one is time series data. So for example, uh, at a given point of time, say this year, 
I wanted to know how much is the non-performing asset across various banks. So in 2020, across various banks, how much is the non-performing asset? If I collect the data, it is nothing but cross-sectional data. One year, 2020, 30 different banks, I got the information about what is your non-performing asset ratio. That is cross-section data. Time series data, one bank, say for example, State Bank of India, over a period of 20 years, 2000 to 2020, you please tell me what is your non-performing asset. Then it will become a time series data. If I put these two things together, right? If I bring both the cross-section and time series together in a bigger table, that is called panel data. So as a budding economist and econometricians, you can start with time series data because the data is available. If you just uh, go to Handbook of Statistics on Indian Economy, RBA, Reserve Bank of India, just two, three days back, uh, uh, they have sent a link. So you can click and you can see 500 tables over a period of 65 years to 70 years. It's available for most of things. India, you can explain in terms of numbers. So take those time series data which is available and do some kind of econometric analysis. And then you can move into cross-sectional data. You can collect information from various uh, sources. And then I think you can uh, go for it, right? Fine. Our panel data is the current uh, one which, which is being applied in econometric techniques quite highly. And especially with the help of uh, packages like uh, eViews, SPSS, Stata, you can just uh, a child's play for you to collect, uh, get the result and interpret it. Fine. Okay. Yeah, this I have explained. Now I'm coming to the, uh, no, the estimation part of it, the estimation part of it. Okay, the estimation, uh, the entire econometrics, I can say, the entire econometric uh, techniques is based on this regression. Because, uh, you know, correlation and regression, you might have studied in your uh, undergraduate and postgraduate course. Correlation is, uh, it will help you only the, uh, you know, association between the two variables, whether uh, wage and uh, unemployment related or not. It will explain that one. But regression will give you the cause and effect relationship. Okay, cause and effect. There is a cause and there's an effect. Say, for example, female literacy rate is a cause. It is increasing or decreasing. Okay, fine. Female. Say, if you take 175 countries, the female literacy rate of the 175 countries is available. You can go to World Bank data, you'll get it. So you have 175 numbers. Mm -hmm. And what is that? That is nothing but female literacy rate. And if you look at that one, 175, it vary. It vary. Okay. And this variation is the cause for something. What is that something? Infant mortality rate. The same 175 countries, you have infant mortality rate. Out of 1,000 children born, how many of them died before that five months or something. There is a definition. So that is varying. So now you have two variables. One is infant mortality rate. The other one is your uh, female literacy rate. So you strongly believe that if the women are literate, if the women are literate, then I think they'll take care of their, you know, the prenatal and postnatal so that the chance of uh, the just born child die is very less. So there, you, you, you have an null hypothesis. What is the null hypothesis? There is no significant influence by female literacy rate on the infant mortality rate. Because null hypothesis always has to be no. There is no significant relation. There is no significant difference. There is no significant influence, something like that. So here we take two variables and set a null hypothesis that the female literacy rate is not significantly statistically influencing the infant mortality rate. Here, infant mortality rate is the effect. The female literacy rate is the cause. So we bring the cause and effect relationship. The basic 
uh, you know, step a basic understanding of going into econometrics is we are on to estimate the cause and effect relationship. First thing, whether it is there or not, whether the relationship is significant or not, you have to prove it. The second thing is, if it is significant, how much it is. If I increase one more percentage of female literacy rate, how much the death I can bring down? Don't you think that is it necessary? It is simply one example. And you may ask that, sir, is it only female literacy rate is influencing? Income is not influencing? Yes, income is also influencing. Fine, you can take the gross per capita income of 175 country in another column. So in the first column, you enter 175 values of infant mortality rate. Second column, you enter in your Excel. Second column is your female literacy rate. The third column may be per capita income. Mm -hmm. The fourth column may be number of health workers are there, number of doctors are there. You can increase any number of uh, variables, but there will be only one left-hand side variable. The left-hand side variable is nothing but the dependent variable because you wanted to know why there is a variation in infant mortality rate among these 175 countries. If you just stop with economics, economics will give you only the statement that if you have more income, you can spend more amount or you can allocate more amount of healthcare sector so that there is a chance of reducing infant mortality rate. You will stop that level. Your economics will be stopped at that level. But if you want to go a step ahead, if you want to go a step ahead, how much will be brought down? I know the variation is there in infant mortality rate. First thing I wanted to know, why there is a variation? What are all the variables in the right-hand side, the independent variables, which are causing the variables? So I find one dependent variable, a set of independent variables. But here again, I cannot conclude that I am able to find out 100% of the variables which are affecting the infant mortality rate. No. I have only four or five variables. Sometimes a sudden rainfall also will have a cause for that death, right? So I just take whatever possible, say for example, even uh, qualitative variable also will have an influence. For example, a married woman, sorry, a, 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 a working woman or not working woman. If they're the working woman, then they had to go for their job with the public transport or something. So they are exposed to a lot of problem. And so there is a chance of that affects the child health. So you wanted to see whether it is a, uh, the working and non-working category, is this quality attribute is influencing the infant mortality. Or you can even say that, for example, uh, educated and educated women. There is a myth, but I, we can prove it. Educated women have more knowledge about uh, how to protect their uh, children, prenatal and postnatal, then the um, thing, and rural urban difference can also be. So the qualitative influence also can be checked in, but quantitative influence like income and uh, various other like female literacy rate, all those things can also be brought in. But other than all those things, there are some random influences there. That is what we are including that error term U. The error term U is being brought in. Fine. Okay. So now what I'm saying here is here I'm clearly constructing a model. What is the model? Infant mortality rate is my dependent variable. First independent variable is nothing but uh, my, uh, you know, like uh, the female literacy rate. The second one is per capita income. And the fourth one is error term. That error term capture all the essence or influence of all the variables which I have left out or which I am not able to express it. So that is the way I, I, I go into that. So regression is the heart of this econometric analysis. Okay, fine, right. So uh, I think there, there is a possibility of uh, consumption expenditure, price, and all these things, right. 
So now what I do here is I just go to some examples for you, right? Uh, okay, again, I don't think I will have a lot of time for you to explain this uh, variation thing. Okay, so I'll straight away go to, okay, fine, anyway. So this regression, when I include this error term here, error term here, right, okay. Uh, Look at this thing. Let us just spend maybe five minutes of time here. Uh, assume that this is a this is a this is a hypothetical nation. Okay, let us assume that hypothetical nation, and there are sixty families are there, and ten different income groups are there. Okay, income groups are divided by say 80, 100, 120. There are these are the ten different income groups, and in each group there are certain families. There are certain families, not necessarily in every group would be the same numbers. And uh, look at that one. If I add everything, I'll get 325. And 65 is the average of it. Okay. And in this second income group, I have six families. The average is this one. So in the, la the eighth group, this is the total and this is the average, right? Fine. Okay. Are you all, hope I think you're all with me. So there are 60 families are there. The same logic you can apply for six crore families also. Six crore families also, right? Now look at this one. The first column is the income is increasing. The income is increasing from 80 to 82. It is increasing. And the average expenditure is also increasing. Please listen, I'm teaching a little bit important. So the if I take only the Y and a, the, 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 if I take only the X, and this average y, look at this one. This is also increasing. This is also increasing, right? So now I can come to a conclusion that on an average, whenever income increases, the consumption also increases. Very clear, I can say. But so with this, I can say the average expenditure, average expenditure is equal to, average expenditure is equal to, maybe you can see that one, this average expenditure. That's in, in a mathematical term, we call it as expectation of Y for given X, which means mean expenditure. We are calling it as a mean expenditure. So the mean expenditure is increasing. The mean expenditure is increasing when income increases. But uh, the mean expenditure is increasing when income is increasing. But listen, please carefully. When I want to uh, construct this model for an individual family, an individual family, look at that one. This is a family, look at this one, say, for example, this is the family, let us take this family, being in the income group of 180, they are supposed to spend 125, but he is spending only 110, which is the average of earlier income group. So, which means he is more of spending less somewhat. So, he is, he is actually a habit of spending very less. So he is supposed to spend 125, but he's spending only less than 130, which means he is spending less than the earlier income group also. But uh, let us take another case, say for example, um, this one, this fellow, right? Listen, uh, listen, this family, he is spending, supposed to spend only 101, but he's spending more than even the next income group's average. So he is a spender and he is a saver. He is a saver. So when I see the average relationship, mean expenditure is increasing when income is increasing. But when I go to the individual aspect, then I think I find out a little bit difficult. So here, maybe I think I can uh, go to some and another thing. I think, uh, OK, fine. Listen, so expectation of yi equal to basic plus, M. am I able to, are you able to see me, this one, Ranjit? Ranjit? Yes, sir. Ranjit? Yes, sir. Oh, sorry. Are you able to see the board? 
Hello, Ranjit. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. So this board is being seen, no? Sir. Yes. Okay. Yes, good. sir. Yes. Oh, good. Good. So okay. Now listen here. So when I say this, uh, this expectation mean expenditure mean expenditure is equal to the basic minimum plus a portion of income, right? Okay. But suppose if I add individual income, this is average. This is average. But this is one person. I told you know two families, one spender and one uh, one saver. He, this is nothing but what the mean plus his difference. Are you able to understand? So when I talk about only the average relationship, that first row and the last row, I can stop with this. First row and the last row, I can stop with this because I am saying only the average relationship. But I will not talk about all the sixty families. So if I want to talk about the sixty families, then I will take the sixty families. Why one? So why fifty-seven? Why two? Why three? Why four? Sixty. If I take this, this number is equal to his group average plus his individual difference. Hope you understand. Right. So this is the way, and uh, and 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 uh, okay, fine. So now what I'm saying here is this: this error term is an important one. Right now, uh, what we do here is, even I think we have to go for a sample size. We have to go for a sample one. So if you use sample, okay, then with the help of the sample, you will get the estimated. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You will get the estimated value of alpha and estimated. So this cap, I am putting it because this is not this. Uh, you know, like this, this alpha is. the related to the population this is also related to population if you are able to collect information from each and everybody in the population it's fine but you are not going to do you will take only 60 or 600 so this is i i apply some formula and i get this one this is related to sample this is also related to sample so now what i do i just then i'll get y a cap So this Y A cap is the estimated mean expenditure. Estimated mean expenditure. This is the this is the population mean expenditure. This is the estimated mean expenditure. This is the estimated mean expenditure. Okay, fine. So now uh, maybe I think I can write here. So the difference between actual income and the difference between actual income and the estimated expenditure. See. i am i am spending this much but i am supposed to spend this much i am spending this much that why i but i am supposed to spend this much right okay but this difference sometimes what will happen some people will spend more than what they are supposed to spend some people will spend less than what they supposed to so this will be a positive one or negative one so to overcome that issue what we do no we just square it we are just we are just uh, okay so we are just squaring it so when you square no minus 5 into minus 5 into minus 5 25 plus 5 into plus 5 also 25 so you were you are just converting that minus plus thing into a plus 1 so now uh, what i am saying here is that uh, uh, so here i just take a summation so that all the you know for each individual so all the 60 families i will get this one so all the 60 i think little bit difficult to understand uh, this one but let us not worry about it uh so what i am saying here is now we are going to uh take up we are going to uh use we are going to uh, understand how the population and sample we are we are going to take it up right okay uh, i told you know that uh, this is the mean one this mean one will be equivalent to this value but when you go for the individual one when you go for the individual one then i think there is a need to go for this uh, cap values fine okay uh, i think uh, it, it is little bit difficult to go into uh, this analysis so what i do know i will just go for a straight away how this uh, uh, the the formulas are used and how it can be arrived at okay let me just uh, take that one okay fine right i just uh, share you with this just for a moment okay stop sharing Okay. Uh, sorry. 
Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay, now listen here. Yeah? So this is an SPSS uh, window, right? Fine. I'll just take one data. The licenses. Okay, so listen here, I have a data. I have a data for various states, like this is infant mortality rate, female literacy rate, and uh, per capita income, and this is a kind of an index which they have created in the wealth okay. Now we have to bring uh, this, this, this. Okay. Are you able to see this screen now? E view screen, Rajit? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Like, listen. Uh, now I am coming to uh, give you a glimpse of uh, how the uh, regression result can be obtained by using some packages. Um, SPSS is one package, and but the most opt for economic study is eViews package, okay? Um, eViews is nothing but econometric views. E, uh, each and every one of you can simply download the student's light version. One year you can use it. And uh, there are a lot of uh, tutorial uh, materials are also available. A lot of uh, freely downloadable e-views related books are also available. So better, I think, you can start uh, practicing econometric estimation by using this e-views package. Okay, let me just open. Uh, when you when you open, you look at this. There is some foreign data work file. Okay, foreign data as work file. So you can go that foreign data work file and you can choose whichever you wanted to choose. I have already uh, saved some of these things. So I can just open it. If I go with next, next, and if I finish it, I'll get uh, things like that. Okay, now listen here. Again, I think within this one and a half hour, it is very difficult to teach the entire thing and just giving you the glimpse of how econometrics can be useful in uh, making an authentic statement about certain economic issues. Okay, so for that, I already told you economics is a dynamic subject. So you, you should not read that as a mindset of it's a static, something what is told in 1970s or 1950s can be accepted now, no. So we can ask question any point of time. 
All right. Okay. So here I have taken a multiple linear regression model. I just wanted to test the hypothesis that female literacy rate is not at all significantly influencing infant mortality rate. One objective, one hypothesis, I have reject or accept it. The second one is the per capita income is not significantly influencing. Then the third one is uh, that uh, cumulative immunization. That's what this variable, let us not worry about that. So once if you create a Excel table and uh, install your eViews package, which is freely available for uh, one year, eViews 11 student light version, you can download it and they will send you a serial number to your mail ID. If you paste it, you can use it with little difficulties, but uh, otherwise you have to spend 10,000 rupees per year. So once if you uh, take file, uh, new file and uh, the take this uh, open uh, foreign data file, you will get things like this. So now what you can do, you can just go for <clears throat> quick, you can go for quick and estimate equation, quick estimate equation. And here we can, uh, we have to arrange or we have to type in an orderly manner uh, you know that uh, the left-hand side variable is a dependent variable. Here, the dependent variable is infant mortality rate. So just I type I, so immediately I'll get uh, all the variables here. Infant mortality rate, I double-click it so that uh, the left-hand side dependent variable I have written. There is no need to put equal sign, nothing. Mm -hmm. Just click one space and type C and give one space because the C is for constant. C is for constant because in every thing there is a constant, there is an intercept term is there, which means that in this case, infant mortality rate is a function of female literacy rate and income. Suppose assume that female literacy rate is zero, income is zero. What will be the infant mortality rate? That is your intercept term. So to get that intercept term, we just take that C constant and give one space and choose other variable, female literacy rate. If I type F, I'll get this one. I'll double click this one, one space. And uh, your per capita, suppose if I type P, I'll get those things, I'll click. So please be clear, there won't be any doubt. Have your data in Excel file, download eViews and learn little bit of tutorials so that you know how to import from Excel to eViews. Right? It's not a rocket science. You can easily do it. So only thing, which variable I have to keep it as a dependent, which variable I have to keep it as an independent variable, how many variables I have to include, all those things up to your theoretical knowledge. What you have, the theoretical knowledge will help. So now once if you write the equation format, left hand side dependent variable, constant, female literacy rate per capita, and just give click OK, you will get a result. This is the result. So on what formula this result has come? That is again a learning process of econometrics. OK, if it is a two variable, I can simply say the formula. Even if it is a K variable model, I can say you the formula. But uh, you will ask the question, how did you derive the formula? How did you derive the formula? Then I think it is a course. I used to teach basic econometrics for my undergraduate students, which uh, runs into 80 hours minimum, 90 hours. So at least 80 hours. And for MA students, it will be for the two semester course, 180 hours. So it cannot be brought into one year, but I'm just telling you how it can be estimated. Now the question is, how do I read this one? So, it is very simple that, you know, this constant, let us not worry about for a moment because we are not giving much importance for a country where zero income and zero literacy rate. And let us take female literacy rate. It is negatively influencing because this negative sign, which you are able to see that it is negatively influencing. So what does it mean? If uh, I can say if the female literacy rate is increased by one unit, whatever uh, unit you say, it can be one unit then the infant mortality rate will be declined by 
0.97. So we can say that if suppose if uh, literacy rate is increased by 10 units, say 10% from 65% to 75%, then the infant mortality rate can be brought down by 10, 9.7. 9.7 means 10. So if your infant mortality rate earlier was uh, say 73, what does it mean? Out of 1,000 children born, 73 ch children died within five months. So that 73, you can bring down to 63, provided if you increase your literacy rate. So if your aim is to bring down the infant mortality rate, then spend more money for education. Female literacy. The female literacy can increase from 65 to 75. Do you understand? So this minus sign saying that there is a negative relationship. And the null hypothesis which I've said, the female literacy rate is not at all significantly influencing, you know, that I'm rejecting it. Why? Because I have this probability value or the T value is greater than three. Forget about this minus sign. Forget about this minus sign. So the rule of thumb is if the T value is greater than two, you can reject the null hypothesis. Look at the T value here. It is not greater than, it is less than. That is why we have the sig value here. The sig value is not significant. So which means per capita income is not at all a matter for reducing the infant mortality rate. You concentrate on the female literacy rate. So the policy decision makers can easily get this information and decide that which variable is causing the reduction of infant mortality rate. So unless you do this kind of analysis with the actual data, you will simply blindly accept that if you have more and more of income, I think the infant mortality rate will come down. So you speak with this, uh, you know, kind of a, kind of an, kind of an, uh, what can I say? Estimation. This estimation is very, very important into that one. And maybe I think I can uh, go for an another uh, also. Uh, let me show you in another uh, data. Look at that one. Here I have uh, dropout rates, child labor, and per capita state domestic product, poverty ratio, all those things. Here I just wanted to see the child labor. You know, if I take different states, the child labor ratio is very varying, varying. Why there is a variation? Why in some states the child labor level is very less? Why in some states child labor level is very high? And then I found that one, the theory says that the child labor is varying or increasing because the dropout rates are very high. Drop, drop out from the school. Or I can say the poverty ratio is also very high. That is why people are not sending their children to school and then uh, sending for a work. And per capita national state domestic product. So here again, I can go with, uh, I can estimate the equation. I can choose child labor as the my dependent variable. I told you one space and C, one space and dropout rate. I can choose dropout rate. The first letter you type and poverty, P. If I type, I'll get poverty or PSMDB. I can get P. Okay. Now I have written an equation kind of a thing. Child labor is the left hand side dependent variable. Why this child labor is varying? I see the dropout rates of variation in various states will influence child labor. Or per capita national state domestic product or poverty ratio can be influenced. Now I just click OK, I'll get the result. OK. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry.
One second, please. Ranjit? Yes, sir. Uh, can we go for a question answer session? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or any other thing if, if you want? Yeah, we'll go for question answer session. Huh? Okay. okay. Uh, Ashish, are you there? Yes, 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 sir. So, participants, you can uh, put your questions in the chat box. Yeah. Or they can even ask also. It doesn't matter. Okay. It's up to them. Let them. They can. Yeah, I think now they can ask questions. Sir, uh, yeah, please go ahead. Give me, sir. Yeah, please. Okay, sir. Actually, uh, good morning, sir. It's great, it's great pleasure to have you for the session. Any, it was a well presentation too. Well, then I am talking about. Uh, is there any? Uh, I have gone through many books which are available on internet and all. Uh, can you please, such a, uh, please suggest any exact or which will be very useful for the beginners? Okay. May you know who is this? Uh, this I'm just from Kerala. Okay. Okay. Fine. See, listen, uh, I told you very clearly that every day at least one hour Yeah, I hope I think you're you able to hear me, right? Yes, huh? Are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Now I can hear you. Okay, okay. See, when I posted this uh, invitation in uh, Facebook, I got a uh, message from a senior faculty in Tamil Nadu saying that first thing in this kind of webinar, we have to uh, you know, like, uh, remove the fear of mathematics from the minds of young economic students. As if uh, I know that some of uh, the students, those who opted economics may say that I have joined economics because I don't want math. But uh, my point here is you should not it's not a completely a mathematical oriented one, but still I think little bit of mathematics like salt in a food, you should add it. Otherwise, a mere accept acceptance of what is uh, given to you, you can't take it as it is. You have to question. So the better, I'll tell you two books uh, so that I think it will be very useful for you. Uh, very simple. Every day, at least one hour, you have to spend with uh, economic books or uh, package. Uh, based on my experience, I think now, whether it you are in the undergraduate, first BA or uh, second MA, a research scholar doesn't matter. After 10 years or 15 years, if you want to excel in the career, wherever you are, I think this spending of every one hour every day will be very useful. You mark my word and you will definitely uh, realize that yes, what said, said is correct. Right. Now, uh, I told you, you know, then, uh, download the DVS package. Download package. Uh, one year, I think it will be freely available. And take this book. I think you are not able to see. Uh, maybe take down this one. Principles of Econometrics. Principles of Econometrics. A modern approach using e-views. You are not able to see it correctly. Principles of Econometrics. A modern approach using e-views. 
Shankar Kumar Baumik. Shankar Kumar Baumik. Maybe I'll do one thing. I'll type it in the chat box. Okay, to everyone. Principles of Econometrics. So this is one book. The another one is uh, Econometrics by Example, Damodar Gujarati. Econometrics by Example, Damodar Gujarati. These two books are more than enough for you to understand econometrics with e-views. So the data given here, uh, the, the data which is used by these two books, you know, you can practice it with, uh, with e-views package. See, one way of uh, eating noodles is just simply open the, you know, the packet, put it into hot water and eat. That is one thing. But uh, the other thing is that one, you know, how the noodles, uh, the ingredients of the noodles and how it is being made up of and go in detail, all those things. It depends on your interest. Okay. And another thing is how this is being, um, uh, the, how this noodles uh, can be added with something else so that it will be so tasty. So it is up to you how you are going to understand about that uh, subject and then how it can be used. <laughs> So better, I think, every day you practice it and then definitely I think it will be very useful for you and uh, you can write a very good papers. So the research papers, nowadays, if I see that one, mostly they start with the chi-square analysis. Whether it is papers from Kerala or uh, Tamil Nadu. Lot of conferences, lot of cut, copy, paste and then simply they are, uh, you know, not very... Uh, a powerful tools are not being applied. So better, I think, learn these two books with the help of e-views. There are a lot of packages out there. I, I can go on. Somebody can say that, sir, R can be used, this can be used, uh, e-views can be used, data can be used, yeah, SAS can be used, anything. But from my point of view, as an econometrics teacher, I can say that... <coughs> I can say that basic, these two books with e-views package, practice it, you will get a good knowledge in econometrics, which will help you to write a very good paper, which will be accepted and you will be get the best paper award winner also. Yes, sir. Hello, sir. Please, Ranjit. Yes, sir. Um, uh, so, do we have uh, any, uh, just I'm, uh, to the audience, anybody wants to raise any question? Our time is running out. If anybody wants to raise a question, you can quickly do it. We'll have to conclude immediately. Anybody wants to raise a question? Hello. Hello. Yes. Good afternoon, sir. Please, please. Go ahead. Good afternoon, Others, please sir. Keep quiet. Hello? Yeah. Hello. Go ahead. Go ahead. The technical thing, these are all the issues we have. Participants. Yeah. Yeah. Shish, can you take over? Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. So, participants, you can uh, 
put your doubts in the chat box and uh, please don't put a thank you right now so yeah, because we are unable to find the questions lot of thanks feedbacks are coming okay if any questions you can uh, put it in the chat box okay let me just read out some questions what economic theoretical approaches and other social science are taught and in what proportions um it's based on the need it is the demand and the, the intensity of uh, your learning of various theories will help you to go into that one whichever uh, subject under the social science economics can be applied economics started uh, applied by uh, the social uh, work students in measuring lot of qualitative relationship and you have uh, a dummy variable models and these dummy variable models will be very uh, useful and in um, Uh, by the way i think uh, these participants uh, i don't know whether i can share it uh, with the permission of ranjit i can share it coming october 12th and 13th zaim is organizing a faculty development program econometrics for social sciences research econometrics for social science research xime chennai is organizing and i am the uh, resource person for the two days Uh, there, I think I'll straight away start from uh, estimation of regression and what are the issues, dummy variables, time series analysis, panel data, all those things. Two days, two and a half hours, two and a half hours, five hours. But uh, it's not a free one. Five hours, five hundred rupees. I think whoever is willing, I'll uh, send you the uh, message. And maybe I think those who are interested can uh, take down my mail ID. Duraisami at sign dot org. Just take a note of my mail ID. Not only for this, any other doubt, I think you can send it to me. Suppose when you are doing a research and if it is a particular problem, you can get an get a fix an appointment kind of a thing like so that we can uh, chat. We can go for it. So those who are interested to learn further advanced one. And ready to spend for five hundred rupees for two days. Uh, you can uh, send to me. I'll send you the uh, brochure. So we we will have an advanced level of econometric knowledge. Uh, what I taught here, I think it will not be there, and we will straight away go into the application into that one. So it is going to be on twelfth and thirteenth of October. Uh, Zain Chennai is going to be there. It's up to you to go for it. Right. Um, my point here is that. Um, um, there are a lot of new techniques have been developed over a period of 30 40 years so if you all uh, i mean you people have to create an interest in attending some of the conferences like indian econometric conferences uh, two years back it has happened in calicut there are around 350 papers have been published all top class papers if you come there you will see that what is the economics which we are learning is something which is uh, not up to our expectation and uh, so panel data time series data all those things which uh, i'll try to cover it for the 12th and 13th uh, faculty development program all the research scholars and uh, faculty members or even the post graduate students are um, can apply for it it is up to you okay i'm not forcing anything right okay sir okay sir uh, so sir today no student not really know the importance and role of economics most of this ask why do we need economics and it uses i simply told uh, adira uh you know like uh, if you want to know suppose if we increase the literacy rate by 1% what will be the decline in the demand for infant mortality rate without econometrics is it possible for you to answer this question you will all simply say that yes yes it when it is increasing it will go down unless until you measure something you cannot authentically tell the policy makers to uh, do adjustment okay within that one and a half hours i think it can't be possible to teach everything and show it to you you please spend uh, time adira i think uh, that will be very good i think you can re read 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 and have an experience with evius package and then you will understand what is the useful you don't believe in that one the gold prices are being uh, predicted with the econometrics why the you know the the rainfall is predicted with the help of econometrics And the the economic tricks or techniques only will will give you a weather forecasting all those things. But our Indian weather forecasting is based on only very few years of data. 
But if you go to England or and America, they are they are fifty years, and every day, every minute, temperature data and everything. Based on that much of data, if you predict, I think they are predicting correctly. They are predicting it, and it, the 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 begin the thing. It is simply econometric technique. And you may I may give you another example of stock market analysis. How do you predict whether the stock of a particular price will go up or down? Is there any dream by by which you will get it? So unless until you have a scientific method where like econometrics, you cannot predict. Even after predicting that one, we are completely not sure about whether the price will go up or how much it will go up. But the only thing is during the because of this econometric technique, you will minimize the forecasting error. Being probability of being failure can be minimized. and that minimization will 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 gain you hundreds of crores of rupees of the big companies so may i interview sir our please, time is our yeah. yes, sir, time is running out sir okay, good, good 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 yeah you can go for uh, uh, shall i go to the vote of thanks yeah, sir? yeah please 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 yeah. uh, ashish can you just propose the vote of thanks yes sir yes yes yeah go ahead good afternoon all of you I'm yeah. very much happy to say a word of thanks to Dr. Dure Sami, Associate Professor Sami, and former head of the Department of Economics, the most famous Madras Christian College. Sir, your presentation was very simple, wonderful, beautifully explained the relation between economic theory, uh, mathematical formulation, econometric model, and and it is again with a simple example of demand and supply. so we got a clear idea about the importance of econometric model and you simply explain the importance of uh, econometrics in policy formulation and the type of data regression model so, and we all are teachers and we we know that quoting right example is very important simple and right example so you caught uh, you explain everything with the help of example so as that it means you are a great teacher you can explain every concept with the help of example and uh, as uh, and we all are teachers we should also copy this we should we can ex explain everything with the help of example so your uh, explanation was very simple and wonderful we enjoyed a lot and uh, in the chat box uh, there are number of uh, comments are there very useful and wonderful session so thank you thank you sir and on behalf of the department of economics Bishopmore College, Mahavali Kerala, and all the participants, I extend a sincere gratitude to you, sir. Thank you, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you once again for all the, the feedbacks, uh, Ranjit. If you want, yes. I can take it from you. Yes, sir. Um, uh, I hope all of you will yeah. give you a feed, fill up the feedback forms. All right, Ranjit. Thank feedback you so much for this opportunity. It's uh, Pleasant, uh, and uh, I think it's very nice to meet around 300 students uh, at Astro. I hope I think some of you join for that October 12th and 13th, so that I think you will gain if you are really interested. Sir, okay, thanks thank a lot, sir. I am deeply indebted, sir. Thanks a lot for your presence, sir. Thank you, Rajiv. Thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. I leave. Thank you, everybody who have participated. Bye.